Hi, my name is Nazi. I'm a fourth year computer engineering student. Uh, we're doing the EECS 3215 course and our project is Home Thermal Management System. Hi, my name is Varsha and I'm in my fourth year of software engineering. I'm Francis, I'm in fourth year of computer engineering. Hi, my name is James. I'm in my final year, fifth year of software engineering at York University. And I'm also part of the students taking the course EECS 3215, which is our embedded system course. Um, now, unlike most of the uh, systems we've been using in our day-to-day -day activities, like the uh, personal computer, which is a general purpose computer, uh, an embedded system is actually more specialized in the, in the sense that it is for a particular purpose in the sense that it uses a lot of hardware, software, and uh, sensors and actuators to achieve whatever uh, the, the end product of the system is supposed to be. Uh, in our case, we are designing a home thermal management system, as Nazi already mentioned. Our project consists of two temperature sensors. Both temperature sensors are connected to a Wi-Fi module, which sends the data to our central server. From our server, we download the data on our central unit, which displays it on an OLED display. It displays the change between the two temperature readings. If the temperature exceeds the threshold, we have a speaker that buzzes and it alarms the system. Well, the theme of our project is Internet of Things, which is basically the internet working of physical devices, which could also be an internet networking of uh, vehicles, which is basically based on cars. But right now, what our uh, the theme Internet of Things is applied in our project is because our the home thermal management system is a Wi-Fi enabled system which interconnects between two temperature sensors as described by Francis before. Our main microcontroller that's responsible for communicating with the OLED and also the server to extract information such as the temperatures is called the SparkFun ESP8266 ThinkDev board. This board is solely designed around the ESP8266 with an integrated FTDI USB to serial chip. The other main feature of this microcontroller is that it is Wi-Fi enabled, which perfectly fits in with the theme of our project, which is IoT, Internet of Things. The SparkFun Micro OLED Breakout Board breaks out a small monochrome blue and black OLED. The board can be easily controlled over either an SPI or an I2C interface. The OLED screen is 64 pixels wide and 48 pixels tall, measuring 0.66 inches across. In order to read the temperature in a room, we set up two Wi-Fi systems for two different rooms. The microcontroller used in each system is the ESP8266 module. It is a Wi-Fi enabled chip which will allow us to upload our temperature readings to our server. The main pins we are concerned about are GPIO 1 and 2. These are general purpose pins which will allow us to read from our temperature sensor. Originally for our temperature sensor, we decided to use the ADT7310, which is an SPI temperature sensor. We weren't able to use this since our ESP module does not support SPI. We learned this throughout the course and decided on a different method in order to read the temperature. Thus, we decided on a DS18B20, which is a one-wire communication and it will allow us to communicate to the ESP module. The libraries we implemented in our software include ESP8266 Wi-Fi, FANT, Adreno JSON, ER underscore micro OLED. We coded our ESP8266 SparkFun thing dev microcontroller by first establishing a Wi-Fi connection with the use of the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library. Once connected to Wi-Fi, we connect to SparkFun's FANT server with the help of the FANT library by issuing an HTTP GET request with our public key provided by our data stream which we created on the FAN server. In the GET request, we limit the data we retrieve to just the last four data inputs that was logged on the server. Two of the data inputs will be from sensor 1, and the other two will be from sensor 2. Data we received is in the form of JSON, hence why we included the Adreno JSON library in order to parse the retrieved data to find which sensor sent the data to the server and what the temperature reading of the sensor was. We then calculate the difference of the two temperatures received from each sensor. If the difference is more than 5 or negative 5 degrees Celsius, we program the speakers to make a sound and alarm that there's a huge difference. The ER underscore micro OLED library acts as the communication link between our microcontroller and the OLED in order to display the temperature readings on the OLED display. And we have the one wire and the Dallas temperature libraries that use hand in hand to read values from the DS18 B20 digital temperature sensor. We thought a digital temperature sensor was more straightforward and it gave us a nice level of accuracy that we wanted. Two important methods to remember 
that sort of encapsulate the entire logic of our code are the get temperature method, which reads both in Celsius and Fahrenheit the temperatures from our temperature sensors. Also, we have the second uh, method, postdefined, which at the end of it post the values that we read from our sensor, in this case sensor 2, to find. It pulls that temperature to find. And that's about the entire logic of our code. The system can be further expanded by adding more sensors and actuators to make it a full home automation system. So like Vasha said, um, our system can be expanded into bigger systems uh, like Nest for uh, implementing an energy saving feature that helps you know the deltas in your energy uh, consumption. And that way, we could, Nest could help uh, um, regulate your temperature to make your uh, uh, house, your home, more conducive for living and uh, more energy saving. Lastly, as everyone said about expanding the project, the other way could be considered too, that it could be scaled down for younger students, maybe even high school students who can take a look at how the system works and build it actually. So that's it, and I hope you got enough insight on IoT itself, and thank you for watching.